Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. If you guys are interested in checking out what my Etsy shop looks like, or if you wanna see any of my merch designs, you guys can check out the first links in the description box below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell notification so that you guys will get notified as soon as I upload a video. But anyways guys, today's video is for all of my candle making beginners out there. For those of you that are looking into how to get started making candles and you're not too sure what supplies you need to purchase, I am gonna run through a list of everything that you guys need in order to get started. Also, just so you guys know, any and all of these supplies that I'm going to be talking about in today's video will be linked in the description box below. So I know that a lot of you guys um, will ask, hey, where did you get this? Where did you get this? Always check the description box below because I will have everything listed so you guys can go check it out. Now I will preface this video by saying that I am not going to be talking about uh, specific candle wax, jars, wicks, anything like that when it comes to candle making. I'm mainly talking about the supplies that you need in order to make the candles. Um, if you guys wanna check out more of my beginner playlist, I will link it in the description box below for you guys so you can run through an entire playlist of everything targeted at beginners just to give you a little bit more information as you're getting into the craft. So first things first, when it comes to candle making, one of the most important things that you guys will need is something like this. So this is a pouring pitcher, and this is actually where you put the wax in in order to melt it down, and then you're going to use this to pour into your vessel. This size right here is about a four pound pouring pitcher, which, which means that it can hold about four pounds of wax. However, I wouldn't ever recommend to fill it up all the way to the top right here. I usually fill this up about half halfway. Um, the further and the higher you fill it up, the heavier it is and the less control you have when it comes to pouring. Now I know that there's probably a lot of people who will fill this up as high as possible and still have a lot of control in pouring. I just happen to be not one of those people and if you're just starting out, I probably wouldn't do that as well. I'd probably make halfway your limit until you get more comfortable with it um, and then you can start making it a little bit heavier and start filling it up a little bit more but I still only make about four to five candles at a time, which is half, maybe a little bit more than half of this pitcher um, in weight of wax when it's melted. And even still at five candles in here, I still have such a hard time um, making sure that I'm controlling it as I'm pouring it into the jar. So that's just a little helpful tip for you guys. The second item that I recommend for candle making is to use a pot. Now, this is something that I got at Ross specifically for candle making. I wouldn't recommend something this shallow because of splashing, but you do want to use a pot that you're not going to be using for cooking. So whether that's an old pot that you already have, or if you want to go to Goodwill and buy a used pot that's just going to be for candle making, I highly, highly recommend doing that. What this is used for is actually called the double boiler method when it comes to making candles. So what you would do is you would fill this pot with about a half an inch of water and you would put in the pouring pitcher into the pot and you would heat it up and then that way it will boil the water in there and then slowly melt down the wax from the inside. That is the most common beginner method when it comes to making candles. That's how I started out. I actually started out with a pouring pitcher about half this size. It was a two pound pouring pitcher inside of this little pot making one maybe two candles at a time that's exactly how I started and I highly recommend that if you're just getting into the hobby or trying to make candle making a business and you're trying to learn the craft first I highly recommend you get started without to see if you actually like making candles now this next item is actually an alternative and I'll explain why. So this right here is called a portable electric burner and it's definitely been used. So I'm not even trying to make it look all pretty and cute or anything. It has been used. Um, so this allows you to be able to make candles anywhere, anywhere that there is an outlet that you can plug it in, you are able to make candles with. So if you don't want to just make candles in your kitchen and you want to take it to another room um, or a garage or something like that, then you're able to get a portable electric burner and this allows you to have more access at different rooms in your house when you're making candles. 
The next item that you will absolutely need is a thermometer. So this was the first thermometer that I got. It's called a commercial grade thermometer. And all you do is when the wax is melting, you just put that in there and um, it just stays on the outside and it tells you the temperature of the wax. And yes, I know I'm not the best at cleaning out my pouring pitcher, so I apologize if that makes some of you kind of, you know, OCD that I didn't clean that out all the way. I apologize, but just realistic. Um, but when it comes to the thermometer, um, this is really, really accurate. So I really like this one. And I do have another alternative option that I'm going to show you guys that I do currently use now. And that is called a laser thermometer. So this one allows you to actually point and click down and it will immediately tell you the temperature on this little reader right here. And there's pros and cons to each of these. And I will kind of explain further why. So with the commercial grade thermometer, the thing that I like most about this is that it's really accurate. However, something that I don't like about it is one, it's very, very heavy. So you'll feel it kind of roll around, especially if you don't have too much wax in there. It will kind of be trying to tip over the side of the pouring pitcher. And also it takes a lot longer to get up to temperature. That's probably the thing that I dislike the most about it. I want it to be a little bit quicker with testing the temperature. And that's why I switched over to this laser thermometer because it's seriously just a second and you click it and you're able to see the temperature however I have noticed that this isn't always completely accurate when I measure it up against this one I've noticed about five to ten degrees difference mainly this is showing that it is hotter than what it actually is so that is something to think about and kind of play around with if you guys are just getting started into candle making I would probably just stick with something like this as you go further down if you guys want to switch over to a laser thermometer you're more than welcome to as well the next item is something that is non-negotiable, not debatable. You have to get it for candle making and it is a scale. So when it comes to candle making, everything is in weight. So you have to weigh out your wax and you have to weigh out your fragrance oil. Now for measuring out your wax, I recommend either getting a shipping scale or a kitchen scale. Both of these will work just fine when it comes to weighing out the wax you need in your pitcher and you can measure it in both grams and ounces on these scales. The reason why I don't recommend measuring out your fragrance oil on something like a kitchen scale or a shipping scale is because these were not necessarily designed to measure out really light items when you are measuring out the weight of your fragrance oil sometimes you're measuring out a very very small amount and you need it to be as precise as possible this is why I recommend something like a gram scale gram scales are fantastic when it comes to measuring out fragrance oil because you get a decimal point so if you need 5.5 grams you're able to measure out exactly 5.5 grams on this scale and that's something that you would not be able to do accurately on one of these I've had a lot of people tell me that they are so glad that they switched over to a gram scale even if you guys are working in ounces still this does measure in ounces so don't think that just because this is called a gram scale that you have to measure everything out in grams absolutely not you guys can still measure in whatever you want to use either ounces or grams this is just a lot more accurate the next item that you guys will need for candle making is something to hold the wick or wicks in place after you guys have poured in your liquid wax into your container. Currently for my 9.5 ounce jars that I have, I did get custom wick holders to use. However, I still actually use these cotter pins for my tins behind me when I am making my candles. And also if there are any instances where I can use a clothespin, I will do that as well. I absolutely love using clothespins. Not only are they so cheap to get but they're so so easy to use and I highly recommend them now for these cotter pins I have a lot of people asking me where I get them because they are pretty long I think they are about four inches and these just basically open up you're able to slide the wick through and it lays flat onto the top of the candle jar so that your wick does not move I really like using these there are some cons that they do get a little bit stretched out the more you use them but they are pretty relatively cheap and a really good option especially if you you are using two wicks. The next item that you guys will need for candle making is something to hold the fragrance oil while you are measuring it out on the scale. 
Personally, I like to just use these little cups. They are lined to where it's not going to seep through with the fragrance oil. Um, make sure if you guys are picking something to hold your fragrance oil while you are measuring it, that it is not the kind of plastic where the fragrance oil will eat through it. I've tried that before. I've tried using reusable um, little plastic cups and the fragrance oil completely started eating through it. So that is just a tip for you guys. A lot of people do use glass shot glasses and then just rinse and clean it out after they're done. Personally, I will reuse these with the same scent and then after a couple times, I'll just toss it out. Um, it's just personal preference on whatever you would prefer. The next item is you will need something to stir in the fragrance oil after you have poured it into your pitcher. Now, I know a lot of people will use metal spoons. Some people use silicone. I personally love these guys. These guys are just your wooden skewers that you can use and um, they're so great. I reuse these all the time, even if it's a different scent. I've never had any issues with cross contamination, but that's just me. But I love using these to stir in the fragrance fragrance oil. They're light and uh, I've never had any issues. Now the last two items I'm just going to go over real briefly. They are just kind of self-explanatory. First one is just a bottle of rubbing alcohol. This is great for cleanup if you get wax on something. Um, for instance, I cleaned or I attempted to clean this right before filming with alcohol because I did have some little drops of wax on there. So it's really nice to clean up and I also really like to use it to wipe down my jars before I stick in the wicks. And the last one is just to get some gloves. These ones were actually purchased at the beginning of this whole thing that's been going on and we found it at a hardware store. So these were purchased at a hardware store by my boyfriend and that's why they are gigantic. Uh, but it's nice because he's able to help me with the um, cutting up of the wax and all of that. Um, and I am able to slip these on very, very easily and I reuse gloves all the time. That's probably the main thing that I reuse um, is I will use the same pair of gloves for weeks, maybe even a whole month before I change it out because there's no point. I'm just touching the same wax. I'm able to easily slip off the glove and then just kind of move on. Actually, that is actually a pretty good tip for those of you that are getting started and for those of you that have been making candles for a while. Get gloves that are a little bit too big for you so it's easier to slip on and slip off so you can reuse them. All right, that is today's video for you guys. I really hoped you enjoyed me going through all of the beginner candle making basic supplies that you guys will need in order to start making candles. If you guys liked today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. This one right here, I believe is called a commercial grade thermometer. It is just um, a very long, prong prong is this called a prong